because it is the astrological new year, we are being surrounded by this energy of start the dang thing already. If you've wanted to get something off the ground or you've wanted to have a conversation with someone or you've wanted to make a change in your life, now is the time to do it. You are being surrounded by this energy of change and newness, this energy of initiation. Hello, my friends. Welcome to It's All Magic. I am your guide, your host, and your friend, Devin Hine. And here, we'll be discussing how to make your life truly feel like magic. I believe that our very existence on Earth is nothing less than a miracle, and that we all have so much potential to learn, to grow, to experience, and to create during our short time here. It is both my passion and my pleasure to walk this path of life optimization by your side, where we'll discuss topics like passion, purpose, intuition, manifestation, physical well-being, and much, much more. I'm a yoga teacher, a meditation and breathwork facilitator, and a national board certified health and wellness coach. But more importantly, I am an eternal optimist, a lover of life, and a forever student. It is my hope that with each and every episode, you too will finally start to believe it really is all magic after all. Ready to dive in? Let's do it. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another magical episode of It's All Magic. I am so excited about today's episode. I keep squealing. And before I hit record, I was going to the bathroom and I was thinking, is it okay for me to squeal on camera or will that actually break people's eardrums? So (laughs) I'm trying to hold myself back, but just know that inside I am doing, (laughs) I'm so excited. (laughs) So we have quite the fun and informational episode ahead, but before we dive into all of this exciting content, I, of course, want to allow us to breathe because, my goodness, I probably need it, so maybe you need it too. The breathing that I want to do today is, I suppose you could say it's a breathing technique, but I'm more so borrowing this from the yoga teacher that trained me in teaching yoga back in 2017, so seven years ago. I believe I've talked about her on the podcast. Her name is Misha and she is just a godsend. If I had to sum up her life motto and also her teaching philosophy in one sentence, it would just be, F it, do what makes you happy. (laughs) She is a true embodiment of playfulness and joy. And so something she always used to have us do in class is this breathing technique where you breathe in through your nose and then you breathe out through your nose while flapping your lips. I don't know how else to explain that, but she would always phrase it as, and now to make sure you're not taking yourself too seriously, we're going to do the horse lips breath. (laughs) So that's what we're going to do today. This is how it looks and sounds so you can get a visual before we do it together. So you're going to inhale. And then, nice. I hope that made sense through the microphone. You're just literally flapping your lips together as if you're a dog sticking its head out of a car while driving and its lips are flapping in the wind. That's what we do. It's good for the nervous system, but mainly it's a nice check to make sure you're not taking yourself too seriously because why take life so dang seriously all the time? So we're going to do three of these breaths. If you'd like to close your eyes, as always, you're welcome to. And if not, all good. You can still join in. So going ahead and emptying out from your previous breath. And then breathe in deeply through the nose. And flap your lips. (laughs) Nice. And second breath in. And flap them. And third one. Deep breath in through the nose. 
And final breath, flap in your lips. Amazing. You can flutter open your eyelids. And I just want you to imagine an entire class of yoga students doing that. 35 people in a room flapping their lips and laughing. If that's not what yoga is about, I don't know what is. <laughs> so I hope that was helpful or enjoyable in some capacity. I know that I just had a wonderful time doing that. And it's a great way to just get yourself back in your body. Like get out of your dang head. Remember that you're just this childlike soul parading around in this adult human suit that you've borrowed for this lifetime. Like this whole thing is not that big of a deal. And I know a lot of us feel like it is a lot of the time, myself included. And then I have these moments of clarity, like right now, where it's like this whole thing is just almost like a game. <laughs> like we came here to play, to learn lessons along the way. We signed up to have both challenges and moments of utter joy and laughter. The whole thing is beautiful and magical and messy and chaotic. And what a gift to be alive. Am I right or am I right? <laughs> so... Okay, it's time to get into this content because I'm just off the walls with excitement, if you couldn't tell. I'll start with this. This is such a good time to be alive. This is a good time to be alive in terms of so many things. I mean, we are blessed with advanced health care and more people than ever are able to put food on their table. I mean, there's there's so many good things about life these days, but right now in particular, it's a good time to be alive, and I'll tell you why. So first things first is that as you are listening to this, which will be April 3rd, we are in the midst of Aries season, and Aries season is a big deal, especially this year, which we'll get into, but it's a big deal no matter what because it's the astrological new year. So as I'm sitting recording this, I'm actually recording this on March 20th. So today is the first day of Aries season as I'm recording. But even as this finally lands into your ears, it is still Aries season. And it's the astrological new year because Aries is the first sign in the entire zodiac. So it's the first of the 12 signs. We have just moved out of Pisces, which is the 12th sign in the zodiac. And I'd like to kind of paint a picture for you of what these energies are like and how drastic the change between them is. So Pisces is a water sign. So it's symbolized by the water element. And as such, it's very fluid. It's sensitive. It's floaty. It's very intuitive. It's kind of up in the dreamscape, okay? And that is extremely, extremely different from Aries season, which I said is the first in the zodiac, but it's also a fire sign. So it kicks off everything. It says, aha, spring is here. Let's plant some seeds. Let's get moving. Let's, let's put things into action. The sun is shining again. So Aries is very loud, while Pisces is very shy and subtle and still. Aries is all about action externally, while Pisces is all about going inwards and really sensing and feeling and knowing things. So there is this sharp difference between the two. And I'll also just say this as a basic understanding of when I say Pisces season or Aries season, I'm talking about which zodiac sign the sun has moved into. So the sun moves into a new zodiac sign around, depending on the month, it's somewhere between kind of the 19th to the 22nd of each month. And it's there for give or take 30 days. So we've had 30 days of Pisces season and now we are into fire mode. Now, all of the zodiac signs, as I've explained in past episodes, there are a few ways to kind of categorize them. So one such way is through the elements that I had a whole episode about. So the elements being fire, air, water, and earth. So quick synopsis of those just to kind of archetypally understand what these elements symbolize in these signs. So water is very soft and sensitive and intuitive. 
Air is very intellectual and communicative and social. Water, I already said water. Earth is very practical and organized and systematic. And then fire is very loud, bold, and action-oriented. Also very playful. So you can see that moving from water, that soft, subtle, to fire, that loud and bold, is quite drastic. But there's another way to categorize these zodiac signs, which is called modality. So there are three different modalities. There is cardinal, fixed, and mutable. So the first sign in every season, including Aries, because we're kicking off the spring season, is cardinal. And cardinal is exactly how it sounds. It's the the signs that kick things off. They have that initiatory energy. They like to get things started, get things moving, kind of rally the troops. They're, they're great leaders. So that's that cardinal energy. Fixed signs are much more, how can I maintain this? I have the energy to keep this going, keep it moving forward. So when the cardinal people have gotten bored, I'll keep marching it forward. And then you have mutable, which are the most uh, permeable, if you will, and most changeable, extremely flexible. Uh, they kind of wrap up the project and move on to something else. So we have these three energies within all of us in different ratios, depending on how many cardinal signs you have, how many fixed signs, and how many mutable signs you have. But I'm just using this as one last demonstration of the difference in these energies between Pisces and Aries. Pisces, because it's the end of the winter season, is mutable. So you can see cardinal is the first sign in each season, then fixed is the one in the middle, and then mutable is the one that finishes out the season and is like, let's move on. So Pisces is that permeable, flexible, uh, mutable energy. And then Aries is that cardinal energy that is like, okay, let's get things moving. So I know that was a long intro, but it's important because we are going to talk about some really interesting astrological phenomena that we have coming up. But I had to set the stage by saying we are moving into this bold focus on what you want kind of energy. And because it is the astrological new year, we are being surrounded by this energy of start the dang thing already. If you've wanted to get something off the ground or you've wanted to have a conversation with someone or you've wanted to make a change in your life, now is the time to do it. You are being surrounded by this energy of change and newness, this energy of initiation. So that is very exciting. But on top of that, we have a lot of Aries energy surrounding us. So I mentioned that the sun is in Aries, which is what it means to be in Aries season. But we have an incredible amount of planets sitting in Aries right now. And that just means that we have even more of that energy. Aries is the sign of action, of impulsive action especially kind of not thinking before you do something but just do it get it into action get it started rally the troops fight war so there's definitely this bold action orientation for Aries and on top of the sun being in Aries there is a very important uh astrological phenomenon that is sitting in Aries right now that impacts us all deeply so there's a concept called the North Node and the South Node. And these are a little hard to understand with the mind because they are not planets like the Sun, the Moon, Jupiter, Venus, etc. But they're actually geographic or kind of mathematical points within the Moon's orbit. So it's kind of confusing. But you should know this, that the North Node and South Node of the Moon changes zodiac signs about every 18 months and the north node south node orientation in that 18 months represents the collective karmic path that all of humanity is on right now so in our individual birth charts we all have a north node and a south node and i'll say what that means briefly but i do want to focus mainly on this collective energy so within our individual charts, which it's the same concept, by the way, the south node represents the 
the things that you have already mastered, whether in past lives, in your childhood, your natural inclinations, your natural strengths, and the things that simply come quite easily to you. It's your comfort zone. Your north node, however, is the the stuff that's a little uncomfortable and stretchy. It's outside of your comfort zone. It challenges you in every way. But as the name kind of points to, the north node is your north star. It's actually the direction you're meant to be marching towards. So for every lifetime, we have a south node that we are quite comfortable in, but we're meant to use those natural strengths and put them towards our north node even though the north node is challenging that's where the growth is so my astrology teacher deborah silverman always says that the north node is your path to enlightenment so that is on the the individual level but the same thing happens collectively so the time that we're in right now the north node is in aries and the south node is in libra Now, the north node and south nodes are always in opposite signs. So Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. And if you add six onto that, which is halfway through the zodiac, you have Libra, which is the seventh sign of the zodiac. So those two are opposites. And within the entire zodiac system, the opposites literally represent opposite things. And so whenever we tune into what the current north node of the moon is, it means that collectively for all of us right now in this 18 month period, we are meant to designate that north node as our true north that is meant to help us stay on the right path at this point in time. And any baby that is born in this 18 month period will have this Aries North Node, Libra South Node. So what does this mean for us collectively right now? I will break this down. So Aries North Node, Libra South Node, we'll start with the South Node. So Libra is the sign that is all about the other. It is all about creating harmony and peace with all other people. It is the sign of the mediator, the lawyer. They care about balance and peace and harmony above everything else. Conflict is not something Libras like. They also care about beauty and the feeling of the home and the clothing. So there's this sense of really deeply caring about the other and the projection of self and making sure that it's not taking up too much space. So there's this deeply communicative balancing energy that we have going on with Libra. So remember, it's the sign of the other. Aries, the north node, is the exact opposite. Aries is the sign of the self. And that's not always a bad thing, but Aries energy is quite focused on self and what do I need and who am I in this world? And I want to take up space. That's why I'm here. So that can be quite a positive energy as well, because if someone has too much of that Libra energy, they tend to be very indecisive, people pleasing. So these are big themes right now. And that Aries North Node is saying, no, no, no. It's okay to focus on who you are and what you want. It's okay to speak your truth, even if it ruffles some feathers. So with this Aries North Node, Libra South Node, not only do we have themes of self versus other, but these are also the signs that symbolize war and peace. So Aries is war and Libra is peace. We're also looking at impulsivity with Aries versus indecisiveness with Libra. So all of these kinds of themes are big for the collective right now. Specifically on an individual level, I would have to look at everyone's charts to help you figure out how it's impacting you at an individual level because we all have Aries and Libra in our chart even if we don't have planets in those signs. I know that's really confusing so I'm not going to go into that too much in this episode. But just know that we all have the energies of all 12 signs within us. We just have them in different ratios and during different seasons of life, during different seasons of life, 
different energies will be activated during what's called a transit, which is just the movements of the planets. So a planet, for example, might be moving into Aries in your chart, as it is for all of us, and where Aries sits in your chart will be heavily activated at this time. But collectively, you can know that there is definitely this energy of war versus peace, self versus other, action versus communication, uh, impulsivity versus indecisiveness. So finding that balance, but also leaning into that area's north node, ruffle some feathers, go be athletic, go be bold, go start the thing, go take up space in this world. That's okay. Okay. So. That is important because we are about to embark on a massive solar eclipse. By the time you've listened to this, we will have already had this huge lunar eclipse. We haven't had it at the time that I'm recording this. Um, But what I will say before I'll explain the eclipses is that eclipses always happen in twos, which we're about to have. So as I said, as you're listening to this, we will have already had the lunar eclipse on March 25th and the solar eclipse is coming on April 8th. They always come in twos and they always have to do with the the symbols of the north and south node. So that means that our lunar eclipse, which again is happening on March 25th, is happening in the sign of Libra. And the solar eclipse, which is happening on April 8th, is happening in the sign of Aries. So let's get into what this means, because this is what I was talking about when I said this is an exciting time to be alive. So we start with the lunar eclipse that has already happened when you listen to this. So the lunar eclipse in Libra. So what exactly is a lunar eclipse, you might ask? Aha, great question, my friend. So a lunar eclipse is essentially a supercharged full moon. And what we have talked about on this podcast before is that the full moon symbolizes the culmination, the ending of a chapter. The light of the moon is at its full peak. Everything that it has been building up to is seen in its fullness, in its wholeness. So that chapter is closing. So full moons, especially lunar eclipses, which are just these massive supercharged full moons, are a great time to close things out, to say goodbye to the patterns, the people, the habits that no longer serve you, to figure out what needs to be released and surrendered in your life, what is not serving you, what can fall by the wayside. So again, lunar eclipse is great for ending and closing out. And what's great about me getting this episode out to you on April 3rd is that even though you've already had this lunar eclipse, this energy is continuing until we have that solar eclipse on April 8th. Because the time between a full moon and a new moon is when that fullness of the full moon, I want you to literally picture the full moon. It has this huge bright sphere in the sky and that light is going to decrease, 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 decrease until it's to nothing, which is the new moon where there's no light against the moon in the sky. And so at that point, what you can think of symbolically is that, okay, we've had this massive closing of the chapter, the encore, you know, curtains finally go down after that full moon and all of its brightness. And then you're still integrating those lessons, those ideas, those changes for two weeks until the new moon happens those two weeks later. So that's why we have lunar eclipse, March 25th. And then two weeks later, we have this massive solar eclipse. So when this episode gets to you, you still have time to make a ritual of the closing of that chapter. So just think of what is not serving you, what needs to be let go of, what needs to change. So start releasing those things, whether you want to journal, whether you want to write it on a note and then burn it in a flame, whatever works for you, I want you to ritualize your life using these eclipses. 
So that lunar eclipse, I said, is in Libra, which makes sense with this whole north node, south node thing. Because remember, the south, node, the south node is collectively maybe what we've already done, what we've grown comfortable with, and we're marching towards that north node. So going back to this lunar eclipse on March 25th, which is the closing of a chapter, we are closing out that Libra chapter. And two weeks later, we have this massive supercharged new moon called the solar eclipse on April 8th in Aries. And so the new moon always symbolizes new beginnings. If the full moon is the end of the chapter, the new moon is the beginning of the next one. So the new moon is a great time to set intentions, to start putting action into the things you decided you wanted to change. At this point, you've already let go of things on the full moon. So the new moon is when you start again and you implement the things that you want to bring into your life. You start planting seeds at the new moon. But what makes this so freaking special, and I can't hammer this in enough, is that New moons inherently have this beginning initiatory energy, as I just said. It's where we we start setting intentions and planting the seeds to grow things. However, we have extra new beginning energy here for a few reasons. One, not only is this new moon in Aries, <laughs> which is that new beginning, let's get it started, let's take bold, impulsive action, just do the thing kind of energy. But we also have our North Node in Aries, which again is our collective North Star. We are marching towards that. That is, for whatever reason, what our collective needs right now. Okay, so we have New Moon, we have New Moon in Aries, we have Aries North Node. And on top of that, this isn't just any old new moon, my friend. This is a solar eclipse. And what happens with a solar eclipse is quite beautiful and symbolic. So the moon will, for a few minutes, literally cover the sun in the middle of the day. So around 2, I would think 2, 18 p.m. Eastern time in the United States, you could go outside with your little eclipse glasses on, of course, and you could watch the moon completely shield the sun in darkness. So at the peak of the day on Monday, April 8th, the whole world will be shrouded in darkness. And that is so symbolic. To me, it is truly the end of that old chapter. And then once the sun's light starts peeking out from the dark again, Anything that had been in the dark, anything that had been hidden or things that you weren't willing to look at within your own psyche, within your own life, within your own friendships, within your own career, everything that was in the dark will come to the light. There is no more hiding or pretending or faking. And so that is a really beautiful thing because using that with this strong Aries initiatory energy, it's like, we're not playing here anymore. (laughs) Like you, we're not doing that kind of Libra indecisiveness. We are going strong, full force ahead, like ready, set, go. That is totally Aries energy. So I'm extremely excited for this. One note I will say just to further complicate this whole thing, and this is the last astrological thing I will mention. So if you are lost out of your mind, don't worry, my friend. So the last thing I want to mention is that even though there is this strong, full steam ahead energy on April 1st, which has already happened at the time you listen to this, Mercury goes into retrograde, which maybe you've heard about this on social media and you've even seen the memes about Mercury must be in Gatorade. My life is falling apart. But I'll just quickly explain what this means. First of all, it doesn't always have to mean doom or gloom, but it does potentially mean a slowing down of the action I just told you to take. So Mercury is the planet that represents our mind, our intellect, our communication, and also a lot of electronics. So you can just think of it's that very airy, uh, eternally changing energy. 
And when Mercury goes into retrograde, which essentially just means that from the vantage point of Earth, it appears as if the planet of Mercury is slowing down or going backwards, even though it actually isn't. It's just from the vantage point of Earth based on orbits, etc. That those things I just mentioned that Mercury represents are in some way slowed down or challenged a bit. So you might find yourself uh, saying things and then that's not really what you meant to say. You can't really find the words or there are a lot of electrical problems during Mercury retrograde. Flight delays are way more common during Mercury retrograde. It's actually insane. So things like that will happen. And I think it's oddly maybe perfect timing that this is happening right before the solar eclipse because as I just said there's a whole lot of that Aries energy we also have numerous other planets in the sky that are in Aries Mercury that I'm just talking about now will also be in Aries so beware of a sharp tongue (laughs) with others Uh, Venus will be in Aries so we have a lot of that Aries energy and I feel like Mercury going into retrograde is just the cosmos's way of saying, okay, you know, ready, set, go, but just think twice about the thing you want to implement before you implement it. So in a way, maybe pulling back some of that Libra energy will help us because that Libra energy thinks about things a lot. It's an air sign. And I also mentioned it's often quite connected to indecision indecisiveness so think twice you know use that mercury retrograde that slowness and thinking and communication and not quite being sure what words to use or how to get this message across to my to my audience use some of that slowness to your advantage and then when mercury exits retrograde which is i believe at the end of may uh then you can fully (laughs) go full force implement it and it doesn't mean you can't implement things before the end of may but just know that any sort of delay energy you might feel in april and may related to these things that you just want to get started that heaviness or that delay will start to lift at the beginning of the summer so that is my astrological talk but i just wanted to say even from a non-astrological point of view these eclipses are a big freaking deal people are going on what they're calling eclipse vacations where they will literally travel to what's called the path of totality so it's an area it's actually going through north america for this particular solar eclipse but it's the line the path within north america where you can see the full solar eclipse for a matter of minutes. Whereas in other parts of the United States, we will be able to see a partial solar eclipse, but not the full thing. So people are actually taking vacations. But on top of that, the news is going crazy about this. So especially in Texas, where the path of totality goes through, They are saying that people should have two weeks worth of food stocked up at home. They should have a full tank of gas before the eclipse happens. People are being warned that power grids are going to go out. So Wi-Fi, radio waves, a bunch of that electrical stuff will be messed with, which happens during a lot of eclipses. And we don't even know why. I was even reading an article this morning where these kind of amateur radio wave scientists I say amateur because literally they have just these towers in their backyards they're trying to figure it out on their own but they are trying to do studies on why this happens and no one knows and so I just use that as further proof and evidence of this whole weird astrological thing called astrology that we might not understand why it works but something about it works. And on that note, I'll just say this because this is pretty crazy before I round out with the last uh, last little section. But in terms of astrology and the physical reality of the world, there are some really wild correlations. You can actually read entire books like Cosmos and Psyche that outline how astrological phenomena have correlated with massive historical events 
So for example, I wasn't sure if I was going to share these because these sound really scary and this episode, this podcast is called It's All Magic, but I'll share them just for the point of showing how wild these correlations can be. So I was doing research on historical events that have also happened around eclipses and or Aries North Node lunar cycles. So I'll start with the eclipse because there was one really cool example. So eclipses, as I said, the solar eclipse, whatever was in the dark, whatever was uncertain, will, will, will then come to the light. It's a sense of gaining clarity, insight on something that you weren't sure about before. In 1919, during a solar eclipse, the theory of relativity was kind of discovered and confirmed by Albert Einstein. The solar eclipse actually brought clarity around the concept. So again, we can use this to our benefit to gain those flashes of insight and to get better guidance and clarity on our own lives. So that's the cool example with the eclipse. But listen to these examples. So I said, with North Node in Aries, South Node in Libra, there are these themes of war and peace, violence and peace. Aries is ruled by the planet Mars, which symbolizes war, rage, violence, intensity, power. So that sounds quite negative. We all have that energy within us and it's, it's useful. That energy is literally the energy of creation, of life. We need that forcefulness, but it can also be either destructive or beneficial. So here are a couple examples of other historical events that have happened during North Node Aries lunar cycles. So there were two massive assassinations during these lunar cycles. One was of Martin Luther King Jr. and one was of Bobby Kennedy. During a North Node Aries lunar cycle was also when the Soviet Union tested their first atomic bomb and the Chernobyl incident also happened during a North Node Aries lunar cycle. So you can see that sometimes there is truly this extreme version of the energy we're being presented with in these situations they literally have to do with destruction violence rage anger war outrage so maybe (laughs) we need a little of that energy right now maybe it is the sense of we will no longer accept the things that don't serve us as a collective as individuals We need to think for ourselves and say, this isn't fair. We're not going to do this people pleasing anymore. Something needs to change. And so there are a lot of astrologers who are talking about some massive changes that might happen in the United States of America because of this eclipse, because of some of the political things that have already been set in motion, but then paired with the fact that this path of totality in seeing the eclipse goes directly through the United States. So there's a lot out there. And if you're interested, I definitely recommend you check it out. But also know that There's an aspect with eclipses, especially as I was doing my research, of which I did a lot for this episode. There's an aspect with eclipses where we don't know what will come on the other side. You know, before the eclipse in 1919, Albert Einstein didn't necessarily know that he was going to propel himself to to fame and get all these accolades for discovering relativity. I mean, that came with this flash of insight. What had been hidden is now certain. It's now in the light. And so no matter what you have heard or seen on social media, I've seen a lot of fear mongering, which you can probably guess I'm not into a lot of negative stuff. And I don't think that has to be the case. I just think we don't necessarily know what's coming, but it's time to be open to the possibilities open to the possibilities of releasing the things as a society that don't serve us and rising up, standing up for our beliefs, sharing our voices, sharing what we want and what we need. So there's definitely that energy present at this point in time. And I will just round this out by saying that to use these eclipses 
to use really any of the things I talk about in this podcast, whether it's just normal full moons, new moons, um, being sick, being on your period, you know, using these times in life to create rituals, to romanticize life. So again, even when you listen to this, even though the lunar eclipse has already passed, use this time to journal about the things that don't serve you, to journal about the things that you will surrender and let go of, what needs to change in your life. And then on April 8th, you're also going to set aside some time to journal or even speak with a family member or friend about the things that you want to implement in your life? What seeds do you want to plant that will grow over the spring and summer and then maybe you'll harvest them when autumn comes? You know, really use that initiatory spring is here energy to your benefit. So you know I'm always here telling you to ritualize your life and now is the perfect time to do so. So that wraps up with today's episode. I hope you got something out of it. Please, please let me know either on Instagram, on YouTube, how you feel about these astrology episodes and if you can understand the way I'm teaching them or if I need to bring it down to a different level or explain in a different way, please let me know. I'm always open to feedback. So you can find me on Instagram at It's All Magic Podcast or my personal is Devin underscore Rochelle underscore and then you can check me out on YouTube at Devin Rochelle Hine. So I post all of these episodes on YouTube as well as all of the audio platforms. So come check it out. Leave a comment for me. Interact with me, please. I would love, love, love to hear from you. As always, if you enjoyed this episode, please rate and review wherever you get your podcasts and share it with a family member or friend so that they also can understand how special this astrological phenomenon is and how they can best incorporate these energies into their life at this time. I think this is a big deal. This is such an important time to be in life. And so I just want to make sure that we can all take advantage to the best of our ability. And with that, I will wrap up for this week. I already cannot wait to see you again next week. And until then, my friends, goodbye for now. 